nowadays much, much better technology, especially with regard to vascular invasion and obviously with regard to mats. So they, uh, you cannot solely depend on EUS itself and uh, CT is complement uh, complementary to that. So this is that part you have to talking about the uh, pancreas. I, I mentioned about vascularity. Sometimes uh, if it's uh, especially if it's a luminal cancer because the staging depends on the lymph nodes as well. Not as so much with the pancreas but the luminal cancer, esophageal, gastric. Uh, rectal, uh, you have to uh, mention about the lymph nodes too. And lymph node criteria usually, I hardly ever have done an FNA on those lymph nodes because usually they are peritumoral. And what I say is like uh, if you're going to do, uh, if the lymph node is just an inflammatory and uh, you might make it positive by going through the tumor while doing a FNA. So I just take a look at the characteristics of that. And uh, if they look malignant, then I will just put them as uh, 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 nodal staging. So that uh, left kidney, not our specialty. And uh, if you see something really obvious which needs a further evaluation, you can mention about that. Left adrenal is really important mainly only lung cancer staging because lung cancer metastasized to the left adrenal. So in those cases mention about that. Uh, with regard to biliary system, bile duct, how that look, what's the diameter. We almost all uh, do a diameter, check the diameter of the bile duct from the duodenal bulb or second part of the duodenum. I think that always gives you a now, I shouldn't say always, that majority of the time we don't give the right diameter of that bile duct because you're compressing on it with your balloon or with your transducer. Uh, the best uh, uh, area where you can get the diameter of the bile duct is really from the stomach itself, if you can see the bile duct. That would be more representative of the accurate diameter of the bile duct. So talk about that uh, mid, uh, with the EUS. Really, we can see the left lobe of the liver and uh, segment five of the liver from the duodenal bulb. Beyond that, it becomes really, really difficult. If you see anything obvious, especially with the pancreas cancer, I always, always take a look at the liver. Spend a minute or two minutes on that and look for any metastatic lesion there because that's going to change the management completely. That becomes a metastatic cancer, so they are not a surgery, surgical candidate. So every pancreas cancer which I uh, diagnose during the US, I always, always take a look at the liver to make sure there's no obvious metastatic disease. Okay. Mediastinum, yes. So uh, nodal, no, there's no need. Uh, that's going to be, uh, there's no purpose of doing that, okay? So the main goal, it, it, because they're going to be peripancreatic lymph nodes. If it's a ciliac lymph node, that's the story, okay? So if there is a liver lesion, obvious lesion, and uh, there's a pancreatic mass as well, you really if, should go to the liver lesion first. Because if a uh, uh, clinical picture obvious is with a pancreatic one, pancreatic metastatic. So if that's positive, uh, probably it's a uh, pancreatic uh, lesion. But having said that, majority of the oncologists, they want uh, actual mass tissue as well. So I, in my practice, because uh, uh, the way it is, I end up doing both of those. And uh, nodal, unless uh, it's just a small mass in the uh, uh, pancreas, and then I'm looking at a uh, lymph node in away from that somewhere which looks like something uh, that doesn't look right. In that case, I might do it, but that's hardly ever that is the case. And uh, for me, I, uh, I think, uh, I don't know, you guys, uh, here, I think uh, if the oncologist is uh, uh, happy just with the liver lesion biopsy, overall clinical picture, they, they would want the main, main uh, pancreas as well. So that's the, our practice as well. We do. In those cases, 
whenever you are doing a FNA of two different places, you should use a separate needle for two, two locations. So uh, they, uh, it's easier to get a PET scan, that's what you're saying? They usually no, come up… Okay, and they already had a PET scan, so okay. The patients all worked up and then they decide, oh, wait, well, wait a minute, this patient cannot be uh, operated, they need chemo first, so then they need a tissue diagnosis. Tissue, okay. So when they need a tissue diagnosis, that's when we get them. Yeah, I'd say uh, the, our practice is uh, obviously because of… Uh, uh, um, and different uh, uh, region and uh, different facilities, usually these uh, uh, patients have some sort of symptoms, they all get a CT scan. What I usually say is uh, uh, the system, the way is system, medical, legal, and all that stuff, you walk to the ER with the toe pain and you get abdominal CT on that. So this is, it's so common now. Yeah, so it's uh, just, uh, I think a waste, waste of uh, resources, such a waste of resources, a little bit of abdominal pain, everybody gets a CT. Uh, so ma uh, what I'm saying is majority of these patients, actually pretty much uh, almost all of those already had uh, abdominal imaging done. Uh, they see something or the clinical picture is consistent with uh, uh, malignancy, especially the uh, pancreas. They come for FNA for EUS and then they usually get the PET scan. I haven't seen a patient getting a PET scan first and then the tissue diagnosis. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really, uh, it's, I think it's just because uh, the way uh, uh, the patient present and who they present to, that's what it is. It's now become freely available, free, so it's, it's a free service available in the... In free, uh, PET, PET scan? Yeah, yeah. okay. So I think these are the two things I want to talk about before I go to uh, uh, FNA and FNB. So, you can't do anything with the radial, right? So yeah, so yeah. Radial is never for FNA. It's you can don't see the needle. You do see a needle as a pinpoint because it's just going in front of it and uh, it's not in the plane of uh, EUS imaging. So. Any any time a needle has to go in, it's going to be linear. Okay, no, you cannot do that with a uh, radial. Uh, if you got to do a uh, biopsy, just you, the, obviously it has a working channel, and you can put a biopsy forceps through that. And uh, I usually use a pediatric biopsy forceps if I got to just do a uh, regular biopsy. But needle, no, no. Okay. okay. So. When I really trained uh, uh, in EUS, that was in uh, 2008, 2009, the only needles available were by Cook at that time. And uh, after that, there's like now a huge industry uh, of needles. Uh, Boston makes it, uh, obviously Cook makes it, then there's Medtronic, uh, I don't know, you heard about the uh, uh, Shark Core, which used to be a beacon needle. And uh, then uh, the Olympus, and there are other companies as well. So there are so many needles available, and uh, I don't know what. Uh, do you have access to Boston? We have Cook. Access to Boston. We have access to Cook. Uh, we have access to Olympus. 
All Ampers. Okay. Okay. Yeah, there are so many needles available. It really is depends. And I think. For my uh, personal, I think uh, uh, any needle uh, which is uh, workable should, uh, should do the job and uh, what you are used to and uh, what is accessible to, you can work with uh, uh, any needle. So it just really depends on the, uh, uh, what is uh, available to you. Uh, obviously, two different type of needles. Uh, one is FNA, fine needle aspiration, and then FNB, fine needle biopsy uh, needle. Uh, based on uh, uh, really what you need, how much tissue you need, what you are biopsying, you can choose that. Uh, at the same time, cost is also uh, is a uh, big consideration uh, in certain part of the uh, work. Uh, so really choose uh, what is available to you and uh, what, is, uh, what is the affordability uh, uh, for you to do that and uh, where the lesion is and uh, also based on cytopathology services, I'll come to that. And so there are different factors that helps you choose a, a needle, uh, whatever needle you need to choose. This is a, another needle. Um, I don't know if uh, you have access to this yet or no. This is a... Uh, uh, Olympus needle, you uh, remember used to have the older ver uh, version and now this has an indication as a core needle as well. So it's a FNA and FNB needle at the same time. Yeah, so pretty much uh, you can use for both purposes. Um, it's a sheath is a little different. It's a metallic sheath kind of and very flexible. Uh, which needle we use, just regular needle, injection needle, you use Olympus or Carlock or uh, which needle do you use here? Just like regular injection. Uh, yes, skill therapy or uh, uh, some Whichever, whichever is available. You okay. see, again, in my case, so, mostly Carlock or uh, the other one. Uh, Olympus needle is there. Olympus. I think Boston is there as well. And, Oh, yeah. Depends yeah. on what the hospital actually gets. The reason, yeah. Our thing also depends on what, what uh, no, no, there, there is a tender that goes and the hospital then selects between the two costs. We don't get involved in that, so whatever comes out. So the reason I brought that up is like Carlock needle is re very, very uh, 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 user friendly. It goes through everything pretty much. It doesn't matter what the position of the scope is, it's easier. And the same thing is with the Olympus needle as well. And it's very hyper echogenic sheet. It's not a plastic sheet, a hyper echogenic needle. So uh, that, uh, uh, especially this uh, uh, new needle, uh, that's one of the uh, needles uh, sometimes I've used. Uh, I basically, I, uh, uh, I use all, th I have uh, all three available, either it's a acquired or it's a, uh, core and uh, Olympus, so it really depends. I think uh, maybe sometimes who is uh, there. <laughs> anyway, so what, what, what is the purpose of FNA? Obviously to get the tissue, and what do you desire in a tissue? Obviously it should be cellular, that's the main purpose. Uh, it should be enough to do ancillary uh, studies, whatever you need to do it later, just uh, sometimes for the genetic purpose, sometimes uh, uh, for uh, flow, uh, flow, sometimes for immunostaining, uh, whatever needs to be done, so there should be an adequate uh, tissue. And uh, ideally should be one needle, you don't have to use multiple needles in that. And uh, what you don't want is too much blood in there. Okay. Uh, Difficulty of level of FNA, all the FNAs are not the same, just remember that. And uh, straighter the scope, easier the FNA. So the most easy one FNA is the transesophageal 
may be a little bit more scary for us because we are not used to mediastinum. We like more uh, anything in the abdomen is easier and uh, a little more reassuring. But, uh, uh, and in the mediastinum, heart, aorta, all those big vessels are closed. And uh, you're not com you may not be comfortable, but that is the easiest FNA to do that because the, your scope is really, really straight. And then in the stomach, uh, could be liver, could be left low, uh, adrenal gland, could be a pancreatic body, neck, and then head of the pancreas. I think uh, uns uh, some people think uh, uncinate process is the hardest, and uh, I think sometimes the submucosal masses are just painful to biopsy those. So I think I will put those both together at the same level of difficulty. For the unsinate process, uh, sometimes you have to straight, uh, majority of the times you have to straighten your scope and uh, uh, scope tends to slip back into the stomach. What you can do is you can ask your tech, especially in that position, to hold the scope for you. And it's, there's no harm, uh, uh, like that doesn't uh, indicate that uh, uh, it's not your weakness if you have to ask somebody to hold the scope for you for FNS. So please, if that makes it easy uh, and uh, safe for the patient, makes it easy for you, makes it easy for the patient, please utilize another pair of hands or another hand. I'm going to come to that. Okay. So, so this is a, a, just the a area of level of difficulty. Okay. So this is the reason. Look at the scope, uh, upper ones here. How is the scope? Scope is really straight. Needle is going to come out really, really straight. So when you go into the head of the pancreas, it's kind of a U-shape because you're resting in a, uh, uh, on the greater curvature. Scope is quite stable uh, still. But look here, when you're in the uncinate process, what the scope position is, needle has to go in, make a U-turn, and then you have to target that. So that's why these are the major reasons why it's uh, uh, more difficult in theirs. Uh, with, uh, a little bit about the definition of samples. Cytology is really mainly individual cells, other group of cells. That's what you need. Cell block, we send that, and that is uh, uh, the uh, tissue you get there that is uh, placed in the uh, preservative. Uh, goes to the lab, uh, they centrifugate, or what we call the spin it, make pallets out of that, then make the, uh, cut those, and then make uh, uh, the slides and uh, stain those. So uh, that is the main tissue which uh, they can save it for later use as well for immunostaining, or they got to send the slides somewhere else, they can send that uh, for a second opinion. If they got to do some uh, other studies on that, they can do on that. So what is core as compared to core is uh, uh, a tissue which has really a retained architecture, what we call not only the cells, decimal plas uh, plasmid reaction to the tumor, and uh, those, uh, that is also uh, architecture is uh, retained, and uh, uh, that uh, helps you do uh, even more studies on that. So th this is, a, and the other key issue is, uh, in our uh, unit, we have a cytotechnician on site, which is our cytotechnician. We do, uh, last year we did 4,000 EUSs in a year, and that is uh, uh, the second largest in the world, and largest in United States. So there's an, uh, one unit in Co uh, South Korea that is number one. They do the most uh, uh, EUSs. But we did 4,000 EUSs. So you can imagine that we are, prob we are almost doing 20 cases a day. And uh, uh, with that, even if 25% uh, 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 of those are FNAs, still you need a, a person sitting there. So we have our own cytotech, which is uh, uh, we pay for that as a unit, not the cytopathology, not the pathology services. So uh, that is not obviously uh, the case with every unit, not even in the United States. And they have to call the cytotech from the lab. And then if they need a cytopathologist to take a look at it, some is uh, their teleproject, the microscope to their pathology, or the pathologist has to come. So it's not easy, and it costs more money. Uh, obviously, that has proven that it uh, 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 does increase your chances of having a, 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 a positive specimen. 
uh, but it's uh, uh, not inexpensive. And this is uh, what we call a ROSE, and that's the main purpose, rapid on-site evaluation. That's one thing if you have available. Other is, is the cytopathologist available in the hospital? That is also very helpful if at least they are available and you can call them and need. And the third is, which is majority of the cases, especially uh, maybe uh, in this part of the world, is that you don't have really uh, accessible cytopathology services. Okay? So all these factors matter. All these factors help you choose what type of needle you should be using. So these are the studies which did show uh, that uh, uh, really on, having on-site cytopathologist does help. But lately, after the availability of the core needles, and there's a meta-analysis um, that is kind of questioning, is there really a need of uh, rows or uh, 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 there is a really a need of uh, having a cytopathologist or cytotech in the uh, unit? Uh, if uh, you have a cytologist or cytotech available, then uh, uh, ring or target uh, uh, lesion there, that's a very consistent with the metastatic lesion. And majority of the times, you're not going to see the lesion, metastatic lesions like that. They're really, really subtle, and you have to have an eye to look for that. And uh, just uh, uh, you have to be very careful. Okay? So here, this uh, I think this was a... Uh, a patient with the pancreatic mass and also liver met. A uh, question earlier asked which one you would do. It. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, that I, will, and I usually end up doing both. And here, I don't know if uh, you're going to notice that uh, uh, when the needle goes in. Uh, do you see that the needle is not in the center of that lesion. Why is that? It's, I, I, I'm intentionally doing, going to the side. Cystic area and it's all necrosis. It's all dead tissue. Even though you want to go into the center, feels makes you feel better that you are right into the lesion, but you're not getting a tissue. Uh, the best place to go is really the periphery. That's the way the, uh, uh, mainly the viable cells are going to be there. So try to go, and it's sometimes easier to really uh, go into the uh, periphery. And uh, I don't know if it's a FNA or FNB needle. It looks like a FNA needle. That's why I'm doing that many passes. Because FNB, FNA needle, uh, fanning technique, you remember, like uh, four times 16, like you go in one place four times, then you change, go four times, change four times, like usually it's uh, 16 times in and out. F and B, you really need to go only one in one place because what you do is with the uh, F and B, you kind of kind of it's like a, uh, you're creating a you are boring it, and once you go in, that tissue is out. Second time you go in, it's just got just blood in there, so there's no purpose of going. At, if you gotta wanna go in the same place twice, it's just like a, uh, don't go more than twice. Second time is okay, but after that, you're going to see it's a white hyperechogenic line in there, which is only blood. Okay. So for FNB, you really don't have to go 16 times. Uh, it's uh, uh, really uh, only four or five times. So these, uh, these, uh, these are the slides showing that you uh, get a tissue, uh, uh, good tissue. For metastatic lesions in liver, they are extremely, extremely cellular. And usually I end up using 25 gauge needle for those because they are so cellular and you get a very, very good specimen with that. If you're doing a three passes of suspected mat in the liver and you're not getting tissue, your technique is fine, you're in the lesion, still didn't get a tissue, I doubt that's a metastatic lesion. It could be a, something else, it could be a hemangioma, it could be a focal fatty sparing, and uh, so it, may, it probably is not. But if there is a metastatic lesion in the liver, you, can, you should be getting positive in probably first or at the, um, uh, least a second or third. But beyond that, uh, if it's still not getting it, uh, then probably it's not. This is another example of uh, on the same uh, area, the necrosis, uh, what I was, uh, even though this lesion is so big, uh, it's very tempting to go right into the center, but you see that I'm pointing at that the necrosis. 
uh, right in the center. So avoid that. Don't go there. Go to the periphery. You can go either on this side or can go on that side. Yeah, that theoretical risk is always there. There is, has been a study, I think uh, it was, I don't know how, uh, it was a few years ago. Uh, they did it uh, very cleverly. I think uh, they got a uh, specimen from the portal vein after the FNA. And uh, you can find malignant cells there. So just doing a FNA, you're spreading the cell, kind of. There's a slight risk, possibly a risk of spreading those. I don't know, I, I didn't see it published. I don't know what the status of that was. Uh, seeding, if you, uh, there is a very, very minimal risk. Theoretically, it does exist. If it's, you are accessing the pancreatic mass via duodenum, that doesn't matter. Because if they're a surgical candidate, that's gonna come out, okay? However, if you're going through the gastric wall, that doesn't come out with that surgery. So theoretically it is there, but it's so minimal that we don't even care about that. And uh, in some countries, I think especially Japan, they are very, very uh, uh, careful about that. It's like if it's a lesion in the pancreas, it looks resectable. Some people may not do IFNA, but the problem is, if it's a lymphoma, then you send a patient for surgery without having a tissue diagnosis. But in our part of the world, in the United States, and I think here as well, surgeons want a tissue diagnosis. Oncologists want a tissue diagnosis because pretty much every patient nowadays ends up getting a either neoadjuvant before the surgery or after the surgery, they end up uh, getting uh, some sort of uh, chemo or radiation. So theoretically, yes, but practically, no. Okay. So, but we, uh, yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, that theoretical risk is always there. Okay. Uh, this is a. Uh, you look at the tissue uh, Y core biopsy, and it's just a little. If you are using a FNA needle and getting this, probably change your technique. It's not needles for it. And uh, so core can give you a more uh, uh, specimen. There have been, uh, when the, these are the FNA needles, uh, even though it makes sense, like uh, bigger the diameter or bigger the gauge would give you a better uh, uh, a tissue or more tissue, but that is not true. And uh, 25 gauge needle is even better than 22 gauge needle with regard to the cytology specimen. Uh, this this meta-analysis is not uh, really, uh, does not come in there. Let me, okay, I'm gonna stop it here. Okay, I'll go back a little bit. So, the important thing is, uh, this is the lesion, right? <coughs> this is uh, the intestinal wall right here, uh, gastric wall. Remember that the muscularis propria in the gastric wall is quite strong and sometimes it pushes you away or it slips off. And especially if you didn't move the stylet back by mistake, then it's never gonna go in. So one thing the uh, do I uh, say is like, uh, get the needle out. Needle should be at 90 angle, possi if possible, to the lesion at 90. It's just like straight and needle, uh, like it's a floor and the needle should be right straight at 90 angle. That's one thing. Second thing is you get into that, don't go crazy and just like you just wanna get in there. So get the needle out slowly, get onto the wall, get the needle embedded into the mucosa. Needle comes out of the scope, it goes onto the wall, then you gently push, gently take the needle out, touch the mucosa. When it touches the mucosa, it kind of makes a divot in there, dip in there, or, and uh, uh, so when that happens, it's like this, a little bit divot in there. That means your needle now is stable. It kind of get, it get, is holding the mucosa of the wall now straight. After that happens, then you do what a quick or s 
safe stab is like this, a quick, because if you do it slowly like this, you're never going to get through the wall. Okay. So it has to be quick, but at the same time, it has to be safe. Don't go through the, you know, from here all the way through the, uh, like, uh, uh, splenic vein and maybe some other place on the planet. And just, that's why it has to be uh, really, really controlled at the same time. Okay, so don't let the needle from one all the way to eight, uh, eight recommend, centimeter. Do you recommend for the beginners measuring the span and then adjusting? Yeah, the you can, yeah, absolutely. That's uh, uh, that was going to be my next point. If you are uh, afraid that you can't control the needle, then what you can do that the style locker, I mean the needle locker, you can just put at four centimeter and lock it down. You won't go through the pancreas with that when it's four centimeter. Keeping in mind, you need one or two centimeters really to ident identification of the, to that wall. So it's going to be two centimeters more than that to go in. You can lock it, and then you have a good control. Keep in mind, do not forget that your stylet is locked. The lower, lower button on that, uh, lower, uh, 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 the, uh, the one which locks the stylet. Uh, because if that is open, your stylet is going to go first, and then your needle is going to go. So that's going to be very, very dangerous that could cause a perforation as well. So got to make sure that your, uh, uh, not the stylet, I mean the sheet, sheet, I'm sorry. The sheet is, that's what I meant, the locker of the sheet. That is really, really locked. Okay. So that uh, check, every time you do a FMA, maybe your cat opens up there by mistake while they're pushing the Sometimes that happens. So every time I put a needle onto the scope, I make sure that uh, the locker for the sheet is really, really tight. This is the lowest way. Yeah, this is the lower no, 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 Because no. sometimes that opens, especially with the Olympus needle. They don't lock it. I have told them they, that the company, they need to lock it, start locking it. They don't for some reason. And uh, but the Boston, the Cook, I think. And also, uh, also, call it just a warning because when your tech actually takes the specimen out, sometimes they would change the setting. Sometimes they don't. They forget to. Open, they open it up and then they don't lock it, etc. So yeah. every time you go back, you must make sure. And here, did you uh, just take a look at that? How, uh, with what speed and with what control the needle goes in? You see that? You see that it just. And that's going to help you get through. That lesion does not move a millimeter, and the needle is in. Okay. Yeah. And look at that. When you get in there, don't come out when you are doing a F, uh, uh, like fanning. You see that how I'm changing the direction of the needle? Fanning is with first thing is with the wheel, second with the scope moving in or out, and then you can use the elevator if needed. But don't use the elevator when the needle is here. Use the elevator when the needle tip comes really close out because you are, otherwise you are, your elevator is not going to work. Okay? So this was only, okay, I'm going to stop here. This was only uh, like four back and forth. So that's different than an FNB needle. FNB, less tissue, less, uh, I mean, uh, less movements in and out. Okay, let's go.
ये वो आपके क्या कह रहे हैं आपके प्रोफेसर साहिद का या साहब डॉक्टर साहब क्या कह रहे हैं करनी है डेफिनेटली पहले देख लें हाँ पहले देख लें फिर उसके बाद तो वो जन समाइम्स क्या होता है ये है कि अगर पेशेंट रियली 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 कंसर्न के पता नहीं क्या हो जाएगा मैं मर जाऊँगा या मर जाऊँगा आपसे करनी करनी है तो दोस्तों ठीक है कर लेते हैं लेकिन जैसे कि फिर माइंड रिस्क ऑफ इन्फेक्शन रिस्क ऑफ ब्लीडिंग रिस्क ऑफ इनका थायरस तो रिस्क ऑफ वेरी वेरी मिनिमम लाइक वेरी वेरी लो बट टू डू एक्सिस पहले देख लें कि हाँ क्या कर सकते कैन यू हेयर डॉक्टर साहद कैन यू हेयर स्ट्रक्चर ई आर सी पी हैज बीन डन स्टेंट हैज बीन प्लेस सी टी स्कैन डिड नॉट शो एनी मैथ इन दैंक्रियाज और एनी यू नो सो वी आर ट्राइंग टू फाइंड आउट Uh, CA199 was normal, and uh, so we are just proceeding. So we've got liver right. So you've got tip up right. जहाँ पे आप पहले थे, that was nice, right? Just advance your scope a little bit. Doctor Saad, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, sorry, we did. We couldn't hear the uh, history. Okay, 48 year old lady with distal CBD stricture, ERCP done, stent placed, uh, CT scan not showing. Uh, Uh, anything uh, CBD or pan no pancreatic mass uh, CA199 normal so we are doing this to find out why she's got distal CBD stricture okay so what are you trying to find out uh, no. you've got liver so now if I go back here that's your liver take it right we are at about 40 centimeters, so 5 centimeters into the stomach. The women usually the geo junction is at 35. So go 5 centimeters gently, clock anti-clock rotation. We have both the vessels, right? So we have the celiac take off there, and we have the superior mesenteric. So if you want to take back and try and do that quickly. अभी हम pancreas की तरफ नहीं जा रहे, अभी तो हम सिर्फ focus कर रहे हैं ये उठा के. ठीक है अभी उठा आ गई ना अब पैंक्रस की तरफ हमने जाना है तो दैट्स योर चिलियक आर्टी तो हम लोगों ने फॉलो दिस चिलियक आर्टी ठीक है यू कैन सी इट वी आर स्टिल फॉलोइंग इट ठीक है दैट्स द स्प्लेनिक आर्टी तो आई जस्ट कीप फॉलोइंग इट एंड वी शुड बी हिटिंग द पैंक्रस दें ओके एंड � अब इसमें अब आप एक दफा पैंक्रियस तो सेंटर में कर लेंगे तो इफ यू गो एंटी क्लॉक यू शुड गो टूवर्ड्स द नेक्स्ट एंड इफ यू गो क्लॉक यू गो टूवर्ड्स द बॉडी एंड टेल सो वी गॉट दैट दैट सो वी गॉट वी आर ग्रेजुअली गोइंग टूवर्ड्स दैट वी कैन लिटल शेड ऑफ द लेफ्ट किडनी दे I keep going a little bit more. You will be seeing the spleen in a bit. So your tip up is important. There you got the spleen. Okay. This is a big subject, so sometimes you can't see things as clear as you just saw the adrenal as well. Our area of interest here is D1. So let's go to D1. So that's the reason. So you need to just check. As soon as we are in the right place, there's your there's your portal vein. That's your uh, CBD. You can see the CBD with kachra here, and we should, huh? 
So let me bring the cursor. So air out, and we've got cursor. That's the CBD there. That's port. You can, you can, you can do this as well, and then bring it down. And ठीक है जी तो समझ में आया तो यू डोंट रियली हैव टू बेंड डाउन यू गो इन आई डोंट नो दिस गाइस कैन टेल मी अबाउट सो वी स्टार्ट सीइंग एयर हियर कैन यू सी द एयर या Okay. The CBD there. If that's the CBD, this has to be concentrate here. D2 can the CBD or PD will get you. So we've got the stem. So I let go of my big wheel a little bit, and we can see the stem here. So we'll try and see if we can bring it a little bit more. and so what i'm doing here is basically just moving slight just and that's the pancreatic duct so you've got both ducts and this is the place where you can uh, quite often see pancreatic duct going this way uh, when there is pancreas divisum otherwise it's going there and both the ducts are going into the ampulla okay ab agar if you go If you go anti-clock now, from here, then you should see. If you don't fall back, then you would see the uh, aorta, and then if you go more anti-clock, you'll see the IVC. But that's not what we are really interested in. We saw one lymph node, so we'll come back. Yeah. Yeah, we saw one. But I'm not too sure whether that's inflammatory or looks more inflammatory to me. This lymph node is parapancreatic, just next to the ancillary. So now what I do is I fall back. So you can keep coming uh, if you want to do what Khalid does, where he can fall back and start looking at the scope. Up, 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 let go of it because you want to take the scope out back into this. Yeah, yeah. You can go back to the. In and. Okay. Tip up. Up, tip down, no. Tip down a little bit. Under, yeah, you're out. Remember, what happens is quite often when you will be initially, you'll be falling back into the pylorus without you realizing. And as soon as you go back into the stomach, the view goes away. When, as soon as you're in the bulb, you'll be able to see the whole thing. Shall we? That's the P portal vein. <coughs> Let me just bring the cursor out. So that's portal vein. That gastrointestinal artery. Okay. Let's go. Dubara, put it there. Artery, put it there. Dubara, just get it there if you can. Yeah, just keep it there. So I'll show if we can. Where is the power? And uh, we'll the uh, cursor go down. Huh. Okay, so that's the waveform for artery, and that's the waveform for on. Yeah, that's the waveform for a vein. That's the power uh, Doppler. If you guys hope you saw it and appreciate that. Uh, yes, that's the exactly. function of the power Doppler. So you can differentiate between an artery and a vein. That's just part of the branch of the, you know, yeah, tributary of that. So we go back uh, now. You need to bring the CBD because I want to see what's happening here. Are you back? Fallen back into the stomach? I have a feeling you might have. Yeah. Okay, the tip up, please. Okay, I need now. Doctor, I'm just a little bit. I don't want to do anything.
So there is one more lymph node here. Can you see that? And there's multiple lymph nodes here. These ones don't look good to me. Uh, Shanil? Yes, we can see the lymph nodes here. Now you see. Uh, they are lymph nodes. Yep. Yeah. Okay, and they are dark. Um, they are. Uh, they look. Uh, this is liver hilum almost here. Yeah. So we see some more here. Uh, you, you, can you see that, Shani? So there are multiple lymph nodes. I think that's what I, what uh, I had seen before. Uh, Doctor Saad. Uh, and there is one here. Can you just show us the liver hilum again? And I will just, just show yeah. you in a minute. Thank so you. we've got one large lymph node here. So we can, ma uh, you know, take the cursor off. And if we want to, then we can quickly measure it. And uh, Foster. So we press the caliper button. You have this plus sign. Press the set button. You get the option there. Press the set button again. You've got 18 mm. Again, you'll have the plus sign for you. Press set following that. You've got the measurement. Press set. You've got this. So that's how you measure the thing. Yeah, this also looks, uh, this is quite big, but it could be inflammatory. Okay, so you want to go towards the liver hilum. So what we need to do for going towards the liver hilum is basically, we, you can see the liver on the left, and we can just keep following it. The one way of looking at it is going that, go, using uh, the D1 and going counterclockwise and and basically pulling back because the stent is there I think you can see that it's not so visible but that's that's where we are did you see that uh, yeah Thank okay. you. Okay. the but the other place where you can see liver hilum is by following the portal width. I'm just going to have a look at this area to see if I can do any if FNA is possible or FN I don't think I would do FNB here Now, can I have FNA please? Hmm. This whole area, let me This area here is... What do you think, Shani? It does look uh, the, uh, abnormal. The wall is uniformly thick rather than, you and know, you three layers. you can't see the layers. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to go as close to the uh, as close to the duodenal fall off as I can to see if we can see a, get a better. Have any ready? Huh. FNA. I'll use FNA, not FNB. Why? My because prefer, but I think I would go with FNA. Sir, why are you using FNA? Because, because it's a very small target. Okay. We yes. have a stent in between. Um, right. So I'm trying to see what be the best area where, because there is some debris in the CBD as well, you see.
Sir, hmm. one question hmm. that uh, distilled CBD uh, very little and uh, there's less uh, soiling. So, how would you feel that there will be good yield of uh, FNAC or FNAC? Uh, I'm sorry, I missed your question. Okay, this is good. Uh, sorry, go ahead. Sir, basically, we are confusing that Leon is looking very little. So, yeah. what will be the yield of uh, doing uh, FNC? Uh, well, we'll yield? find out in a in a few few minutes. But uh, that is that is where it, that is why I've been spending so much uh, trying trying to see exactly where I want to go and see if we can get something out of it. Okay. But uh, you're it is difficult. Doppler. Yeah. Difficult because uh, it's So this is my area where I really want to come because I don't think this is debris but uh, we'll find out in a bit. Sir, will uh, brushing help us regard, uh, as compared to FNC? Would brushing yes, help? Uh, what is the audience think? My experience is Uh, you have the option of intraductal biopsies, you can do it, yes. But uh, I can feel that I am getting some tissue here uh, just by the feel of it. So I am hoping that we will get something out of it. Uh, uh, the yield is actually with rose is pretty good. Uh, we will be able to find out what's, uh, what we are uh, what we've got uh, and then obviously accordingly uh, see how many passes we have to make. But you see this is uh, the area that I was targeting is Patriban uh, Khatam I mean, as you would appreciate, it's much easier to take a, take a specimen from this area, okay? Uh, if, you, if I had to target this lesion, it would be very, it would not be a problem, okay? But uh, this is not necessarily going to give us the yield. It's probably like the last one, which to me doesn't look malignant. So I don't know, I'm not, I, that's why I'm not biopsying that. I'm rather focusing on this area, which is, uh, if I can show you, my area of interest in the duct is this area, where we have uh, hypoechoic hair, the, the layers, I can't see anything about the duct. And this doesn't look like debris to me. When I went in, this was slightly it gave me a feeling of tissue as well, so that's also something that you get. 
you see that better now yes yes hmm? so so this is this is what this is the area that is of interest to me here So this patient is being done under sedation. We have given her one milligram of midazolam and one milligram of kins. That's all. This is our normal practice. Most of our patients for FNA or FNB are done under sedation. Only uh, uh, therapeutic work, whether it's celiac plexus block, whether it's biliary drainage or uh, pseudocyst drainage, that's where we actually. Um, uh, use uh, propofol more or obviously in some patients there is uh, where we have issue with the uh, sir one question yeah while taking biopsy from distal CVD is there any chance of perforation here no we've already got a stent here Okay. Unlikely. If you don't have a stand in the uh, CBD, then then you may. But uh, if you are going into the wall and if you see a mass, then I don't think that should be a problem. Something that we don't worry too much about. These needles are very small, 22 g. So generally speaking, I have not. So when I see, can you you see? Look at the needle here. We can't hear you, sir. I said, if yes. you look at the needle, yes. when I pull back, you can see the tissue comes back a little bit with it. Can you see that? Yes. It's yes. tenting there. So that's what's telling me that we are where the problem. Not good, good, sir. <coughs> yes, but still not. This here thing. again, can yeah. you feel that? And this is not the stent that's blocking me on stand that's pulling me. So I am pretty convinced that we are in the mass. We are, we are in the tissue and so let's hope we get some good tissue here. So no, when, the, when you've got a stent already in place, you don't have about it at all. If you don't have a stent in place, it's very unlikely uh, that you would be something that we haven't seen that often. Because these patients usually present with obstructive jaundice, so they are usually already have had their ERCP before they was general. If you notice, uh, my scope is straight, and once I've got my position, um, we try and maintain it. And be your Sir, in such cases where we are seeing uh, the distal CBD malignancy, hmm. so still we are confusing the CT scan reports. So it is not better to go for endoscopic ultrasound in spite of going for, uh, I mean, a CT scan? I think CT scan is very useful because it gives you a, 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 a guide, but you can go for US first as well. CT scan would be nice in picking up uh, uh, liver meds. Yes. Any other med CT scan would pick up better than us because we can only look at left lobe and, um, uh, you know, segment 5. So we can't look at the whole liver and we can't look at anything beyond 5 centimeters, generally speaking. So, so a lot of things are going to be picked up by CT scan that we can't pick up because CT scan is a more holistic test and uh, has advantages with vascular. Uh, invasion, vascular involvement. So I think CT scan is, is, is useful and to be honest the practice generally is that when you have a person who has obstructive jaundice and they suspect uh, there to be a problem with pancreas or CBD, mostly patients already have a CT scan and then they are referred to us. That's what we uh, Sir, uh, if, if we, if we uh, come across a patient, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can. Uh, if we come across a patient with obstructive jaundice and CT is suggestive of terminal CBD uh, stricture, 
So what would you suggest to go first, ERCP or the US well, guided? If you, if you have the facility available, then um, both at the same time. Uh, which one Ideal. is the first? You do EUS first. Yeah. You look at the lesion. Um, and if there is a need UFNA, of FNA, if there is a need for doing an ERCP, you just do the ERCP then and there. US with FNA, FNB, whatever is required yeah, first. Yeah, if, if you see a mass or a lesion, then you do FNA or FNB, whatever. <laughs> right, thank you. For most good centers uh, who have the facility available, they would um, go ahead and do an EUS first, immediately followed. I need to see what this is here. Back to the liver, you lost. So in the liver, when you're looking at the liver, we should be able to see the vessel, the ductal system is dilated. Okay. Keep following the liver here. Keep going right. Keep going right. Okay. We have another lymph node here. Uh, So we've got one lymph node there. Uh, there's a lymph node there, but that's a not so. Yeah. Uh, you see, they, yeah. Look at this now. Uh, no, this is not. This is not hilar area. This is most likely. You see the stent there? Can you see the air? So. Yes. I'll tell you, these are all lymph nodes there we were asking about. When I told you I saw them, uh, we were going in. Can you appreciate? Yes, we can. Uh, if I show you all this area, this is lymph node there and this is looking, this is a pretty ominous looking lymph node to me. Okay. This is, I would say this is, what area is it? Eight minutes, right? This is very pancreatic here. This is more, more. Yeah. This, this is your portal vein, right? This is the portal confluence. Okay. That's your stent. Can you see the stent there? CBD there. There's the stent. You can see the CBD here. Uh, can you appreciate the CBD? Yes. So you can see the CBD there, and uh, you can see the. Hopefully, see the stent there. In it's dilated now. You can see the stent better. So we are we are going towards the duodenum. If I keep going clockwise, we are going towards the duodenum. If I go anti-clockwise, I'm going now towards the liver. Okay, so I'll keep going, and that's another way of looking at the hilum. So we, you can see the CBD followed all the way into the liver, and the way you're doing is just little bit of uh, clock, anti-clock, but a slight pullback and then going anti-clock, letting go of your big wheel as well while you're doing that. We're almost at the liver here. Okay. So that's your hilum there. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we are, we are now in the stomach and looking at everything. These lymph nodes are obviously ominous here. She's got, uh, she's definitely got malignant tissues. That's uh, anybody with that? Uh, doc, what is this? What is this? What is this? Hai to vessel. Aur ye bhi vein hai. Kya ho sakti hai? Liver mein hai. Infra hepatic IVC there. Okay. And this IVC you can, if you keep pulling back, Keep pulling back, keep pulling back, keep pulling back. I'm going a little anti-clock, pulling back, pulling back. Little and more anti-clock, pulling back. Following IVC, following IVC. Letting go. So we follow it and we've come to the heart there. That's the, that's the right atrium. 
Okay, so we can follow the IVC all the way to the right atrium. Um, I think liver, liver may the, I couldn't see any, you saw the liver thing. Just have a look at the mediastinum, we'll come out. I think the area of interest here uh, we have seen. So I would have my tip, uh, scope tip up a little bit. Yeah, you've got the left atrium pulled back. So you've got both the uh, valves, you can see mitral valve, you can see mitral valve, you can see aortic valve. You can follow aorta if you want to, but there is no need to. So just pull back, pull back, pull back, and tip up, pull back, slight clockwise rotation, slight clockwise, that's it. So now you have, that's it. So you have left atrium here, you have aorta here, and you have the subcarina, okay? And so you can look at the subcarina, so what, the way you look at it is you can rotate a little, so you will be able to see a little better there. You can see the lymph node, which we were not seeing before. Now you can, so you can see the subcarina by again rotating um, or, or, or moving your scope clock and anti-clock gently. So you can do that, and as you come out, I wouldn't bother with the AP because patients really become uncomfortable, but you know how to do it. You've been told. So all you need to do is for AP is you need to we'll just have a gentle try. Let this hand go down, 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 and pull the scope back. As you pull back the scope oh, gently, tip up, tip up, yeah. So we've got aortic arch. In fact, you've got the, <laughs> you've got the AP window there. Okay. Can you see that? Pulmonary artery on the left, aorta on the right. Yeah. We can. See okay? This may be short then. Take take air out and take the scope out. Yeah. Okay. It is not about completing the scope here because you, obviously if you can complete this, then it's about understanding the clockwise and anti-clockwise movement. It is about making sure your tip is up enough. It is about knowing what happens when you have tip up and what happens when your tip is down. It's also about knowing how, what happens when you advance the scope and when you pull back the scope. So this is your chance to understand those things. Once you've got the fundamentals, the pictures and things, obviously with experience, everybody will do. Simple things are... My level of EUS, you can reach very quickly. Beyond that, you have to work very hard. It might be a magical experience. Hello, good. Can you take... Uh, Dr. Khalid, can you hear us? I think it's a lymphoma. It's a lymphoma in a pancreas? Yeah. That's what was suspected. Suspected? That's Suspect. I think there's one case that this is the same case. Dr. Sandhurst? Yeah. That's a good case. What was the one? What was the one? I'm pretty sure that's a... Some... Suspect lymphoma? Mm -hmm. Dr. Khalid, can you hear us?
देख काफी साल बियॉन्ड द so we know the little bit about the lateral boundaries but i don't see the distal boundary there was a one area where we could get a little bit idea about the distal and when we uh, sized it it was close to 11 cm so we just did a fna of uh, this i looked at the slides i could see some uh, uh, small slides uh, cells in there uh, i initially i thought it was a lymphoma it looks like a lymphoma but more i look at it more i suspect it's a neuroendocrine tumor on the uh, slides uh, you see small cells and uh, what we call a fried egg appearance so it likely is a neuroendocrine tumor and it's a large so when you see a small cells on slide then uh, things uh, you look for is either it's a lymphoma neuroendocrine small cell cancer and here that big of a mass in the pancreas that has to be likely either a lymphoma or a neuroendocrine the uh, adenocarcinoma doesn't grow that up to 11 12 cm so this is you really don't see any yeah pulmonary artery left atrium aorta and rotate a little bit to the left left fore pull the scope back a little bit big will towards you a little bit okay. pull the scope back okay now rotate a little bit to the right after this so this is bad position okay ap i mean uh, not ap uh, subcranial subcranial okay abhi yahan se board aake apne hota board left pe jaunga nahi apne sirf rotate karna hai yahan right there or full cut okay jab aake pe order aage na theek hai big will a little bit towards you gently advance it big will towards you please little bit and rotate to the right right perfect pulmonary artery yeah aorta ap pind theek hai chalo sab dost mangalam hai band kar le
difficult to know exactly what it is. So Obviously. there is no point me saying this is. Dr. Nand Lal. Dr. Imran Arshad. Dr. Akram Bajwa. Dr. Ghulam Abbas. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Dr. Saad. Thank you, Dr. Saeed.
to the neck area, okay? Right, that looks pretty good. Take it towards you a little bit, right there, okay? Now pull the scope back a little bit. Show me the splint uh, portal confluence again. Good, good job, excellent, okay, right there, okay? And going into the uh, neck area, it didn't, no problems, looks pretty good. Okay, let's go to the duodenal uh, bulb now. And before we go there, we're gonna take a endoscopic look first. Good, deflate your balloon, please. All the way. Okay, good. Inflate now uh, the lumen. Good. Okay, keep going. Okay. Good. So, because we needed to take a and let's go into the dwarf bulb and make sure that looks okay too. Also, uh, uh, I think I'll taking a look with the endoscope first and then you see the PD right here, your portal vein is right there, okay? So we're gonna just gently, big way towards you please. Yeah. All the way? Yeah. There's a lot oh. more, okay? okay, okay, okay. A little better view. You see that? Okay. The PD is right here. What I'm doing is I'm also taking a look at the duodenal wall right there because that's where the gist was. So I'm looking at uh, that as well, and I don't see any thickness there. Dr. Khalid, can you uh, tell us about the vascular structure? So which one is SMV and which one is so splenic? So here uh, we need. A View. So this is a splenic vein right here, which is coming from this side, and it's connecting with the SMV duodenal bulb. And there's a portal vein which is going up here. We're just uh, uh, are not in the best position right now to show, but he's doing pretty good uh, overall. At least bringing some structure. So let me see. So in this case, uh, I think what's happening is like uh, maybe a view. A view is a, a little uh, better close to the pylorus, but I'm gonna uh, if I can get a better view from the duodenal apex a, uh, area. And even though I see the pain right there, okay. so here a little bit uh, maybe a little better uh, right there. You see that uh, portal vein is right here. Uh, splenic is here, SMV is here. You see a, a pancreatic duct right in that area. It's in the uh, neck area right now. I'm going towards, uh, uh, trying to go towards the uh, ampulla, and you see the bile duct is right here on the top. Yes. Right there, pancreatic duct right there. So in her case, looks like uh, the best view of the pancreatic uh, duct and the bile duct together are ampulla is close to the pylorus then instead of a uh, duodenal apex, which is the, uh, and that may be because of the surgery she had. She had a resection of that area uh, before because of the gist, so that may be the reason. But we, we don't see any abnormality here. You see the bile duct right there, you see a pancreatic duct right there, and you see a portal vein right there, portal confluence, and if I follow this duct towards the neck of the pancreas by rotating anticlockwise, you can see it's nice looking all pancreas right here and the duct is dipping into the neck area. While I'm doing that, I have one uh, uh, portion of my eye on those walls as well. I, this is the first thing I looked at when we went in there, because that was the purpose of the examination to take a look at the wall in the duodenal bulb and uh, pylorus. And those looks pretty good. So what we can do is I'm gonna pay more attention to these, and I'm gonna rotate my transducer a little bit uh, to take a look around that because it's a uh, obviously linear scope so I'm rotating that and it's making a circle around that you see that making and then I'm gonna go to the uh, other side so I can take a really good look at the whole wall making 
sure. It's a little bit, looks like maybe a little bit thickness here, but I don't see any. I can easily compress that. I see a nice muscularis propria still, but I, uh, otherwise, like right there, a little bit loss of uh, uh, those indistinct, uh, distinct uh, uh, wall layers, but muscularis propria is absolutely intact. So these were possibly are the post-surgical, post-operative changes. Yep post-surgical changes. Otherwise, I'm going going around that wall looks pretty good. I don't think there is anything there. So same thing is uh, uh, at the pylorus too. We can take a look at the pylorus right here. I don't see any thickness there, really. So that and the purpose was to take a look at that with the PUS and that's what we don't see. So let's go to the uh, D2 uh, now. Uh, what I'll do is I'll let you do that and then I'll explain. Okay, I'm gonna come back because it goes straight to the landmarks. Okay, keep going. Okay. Deflate the balloon. Now you're in the right position, okay? When it's a short position, now you're gonna step back, suction, suction the lumen. Just suction the lumen, please. Suction further, 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 further. Okay, now let's pay attention to the EUS image. You wanna put a little bit of fluid in the balloon? A little bit? That's it. No, not too much. You see that when you do too much, then it uh, more air is coming. So just a little bit in there, okay? So now let's find our landmarks, which are? Aorta or IVC or uh, pancreas, one of those, so we can follow the rest, okay? So you went quite deep in there, and she also had a surgery, so it's not going to be that deep, so you see the aorta, perfect, okay? Yeah. Withdrawal. Yeah, withdrawal further, withdrawal further, good. So you see the IVC right on top of that. So IVC is right here, rotate further to the right, and pull the scope back, big wheel towards you, okay? So you can step back, always take a step back. Okay, good. I don't know. We you know, like we gotta make it uh, a little look better, a little better. Okay, a little bit. This is a pancreatic right here, but needs to be pulled back a little bit further. Okay. But this is makes no sense. There yeah. that much air, so. Not gonna see anything. Okay. Aorta, okay. okay, you went back in there. Okay. IBC right there. Let's rotate from the aorta, rotate to the right. Looks like it's coming up here. We have to be able to maintain that. Good, good. That's the unsonate process looks like. Right there, this is all pancreatic tissue. Okay. Keep pulling back. I think the ducts are gonna come up here. I can get a sense right there, they are there. Okay. If, unless you pull, this is not gonna come underneath the transducer, okay? That's better. Okay. It came back a little too much. Okay, let me take a look. I think it's just all uh, also because of the surgical anatomy. Okay. 
So you see the aorta was right there. Okay. Now there is no air. What happened? Okay. Did you see any air? No. Okay. What was happening? Why was there air? Because one thing is you're not approximating. Okay. Also, second thing by mistake you keep putting your finger on the button. Okay. Okay. So that's you need to switch from EGD uh, to EUS. So this does not finger should not go on the air button. So that's what was happening. Okay. So here you see that there is no air now whatsoever. Okay. And here, if you'll pay attention right now, you see the uh, aorta right there, mm -hmm. right? And uh, looks like uh, uh, those uh, uh, ducts are coming up on that area, right? Right there. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. I'm not touching the air button. That's it. Right there is the pancreatic duct. Mm. Okay. And again, because of surgical anatomy, it may be a little bit challenging, but. This is very important you, because you keep your uh, uh, putting your finger on the air button. Okay. So, two thing is like you're not approximating uh, uh, with that uh, the wall, the transducer is not touching it, mm -hmm. and the second is like uh, uh, you keep putting the uh, your finger on the air button. So yeah, it's a also a little bit shorter that place because of the surgery, but there's nothing in the unsanate process or uh, in the head area. So nothing there endoscopically, all looks good. So every time I use the uh, uh, US, I just make a habit, train your brain that you're not supposed to be uh, putting uh, your finger on the air button. Okay. So, are you up? Uh, let's do the um, uh, mediastinum area. Do you do the barasikalai? No, that's fine. Move on. So, next time you will remember now. Keep pulling the scope back. Keep pulling. Always in neutral yeah. position. Keep pulling back, keep pulling back. Good. Yeah. Good. Excellent. Keep coming back. Keep co So this left atrium. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Okay. This is okay. Yeah, still you're having some uh, because yeah, big wheel towards you, you're not moving other thing is like not moving the big wheel towards you is not going to put the transducer on the wall, okay? Mm -hmm. That's one thing. That's how the air is coming. Mm -hmm. Second is uh, keeping a finger on the air button, okay? So now you can do this. You see that? Yeah. Rotate there and that's a uh, subcrinal right there, okay? Keep coming back further. <coughs> Perfect. Good job. Excellent. Keep coming back, keep coming back, keep coming back, okay? Keep coming back, big wheel a little bit towards you, a little bit towards you, rotate, you push the scope in a little bit like a centimeter or so and rotate to the right. Beautiful. Good job. Okay. And you see a lymph node there yes, actually. Sir. Okay. That's fine. Good. Thank you, sir. You're good. So good. Well done. Finished, sir. G finished. Thank you, sir. Hello, sir.
So now take air out. Good, take more air out. What are you doing? No, go anti clock now. More, more anti clock. Okay, pull back now. Pull back a little bit. Pull back. Pull your scope back. Thoda sa. Okay, now tip up. Tip up and clockwise anti clock rotation. Right, clockwise anti clock rotation. Okay, when you will rotate, you will see something here. So we saw one vascular structure come and go, right? right. So we, if we do this, just straight, straight. Okay, you've got aorta there. Go more, go more and. Right? This, 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 this is IVC. Uh, okay, IVC. Yeah. IVC is compressible. Go more anti clock. You've got right kidney. 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 Now you're just moving your. You're not doing anything. You're just moving your hands. Your shoulder. Okay. You've got aorta. Right? Keep going. You've got. You've got one of the ducts right there. So you see the ducts. Are we with you guys? So ducts in D2 in this area okay so this is one of the ducts that's coming that should be the cbd okay so now just gently let go of your big wheel thoda sa sko tip forward kare or no clockwise rotation rakhe you don't change your clockwise agar aap tip down kar rahe hain to baaki cheeze thodi change kar right now pull back now and pull back slowly slowly pull back slowly and keep doing clockwise anti clock gentle movement okay pull back pull back pull back thoda sa Okay, that's your uncinate. Okay, this is this whole thing is uncinate. Okay, and now you have the superior mesenteric vessels will be here, right? And you should see the CBD and PD coming here. Obviously, they are easy when they are when they are very dilated, and they are not so easy when they are not so dilated. But there it is, right there is the CBD there. That's the CBD, and that should be the PD. So you need to let go of your big wheel a little bit. Front pe karein tip down. Vapis anti clock. Counter clockwise movement karein. Clockwise movement. Counter clockwise movement karein. Ha karein karein karein. Think you probably fallen back into the stomach. Okay. So that's how you do it. So we'll just go ahead and show the uh, mass that we have seen in the tail. And that's your gallbladder. Somebody was asking me, how do you see the gallbladder? That's um, we are just right near the pylorus. And uh, we can see the whole gallbladder just next to the liver there. Okay, so we'll come to the area of interest here, which is just here. Okay, that's the mass. So this is a mass in the body of the pancreas, which has cystic component to it, but obviously there's uh, can you all appreciate it? I don't know if you guys are with me or not. Uh, yes, we can see. Okay, so we want to make sure there is no major vessel there. So this is probably a cystic lesion that may have turned into something more sinister. Uh, the threshold that we have. Uh, I like it here. Uh, so everything is good. What I was telling you is that I took this off. Um, if you want to, you can lock things. Ex floro, uh, sorry, floro dalo. Uh, so floro dalo. Okay, so we are good. Needles coming out. We are fine, right? And there is no and There is no uh, tightness that I feel. I've got it at almost 90 ang angle. Take the flow off, please. Nope, I went into it but slightly sideways so I am just going to bring it more here and we are in. Okay. So once we are in, I take the trocar out. It is hard so I come back. This is FNB22G right? Yes, sir. 
So I go one and I'm not going to go here. So I go two and I can change my position with my big wheel.
एक मिनट ठहर जाओ दे दो मेरा ख्याल पूरा है ना जी हाँ Uh, well, uh, can can you guys hear me or no or <laughs> yes we can hear you okay you. so did you see the case i guess uh, the one i'm doing right now okay uh, this is a in ki umar kitni hai in ki umar ke amar dekho bhai Fifty. So she's a fifty years old, and uh, she had this recurrent pancreatic pseudocyst. She mm. had a drainage few years ago. She did really well uh, for a year or two. It reoccurred. So I saw her more than six months ago in uh, uh, Orlando in the uh, USA. I did a cyst gastrostomy, and I put a pancreatic stent in there. And uh, if you can, uh, uh, I'm going to show you just the whole pancreas right now, the EUS. I'm right at the G uh, below uh, below the G junction. You can see that the aorta right there. Mm -hmm. You see the uh, celiac, celiac takeoff celiac, right yes. there. And when I go to the celiac, you see the left gastric coming off right there. That's the left gastric going towards the right of the screen. Yes. I'm gonna follow the splenic uh, right there, mm -hmm. following the splenic, following the splenic, 
following the splenic and that takes me straight to the pancreas right now okay yeah, yes so you see the pancreatic uh, you see the pancreatic duct here you see the splenic artery splenic vein mm -hmm. pancreatic duct a little bit prominent if you take a look at that okay so probably three millimeter or so maybe two to three millimeter right in the body not too bad uh four millimeters yeah 2.4 okay so not too bad. From here, when I follow the pancreatic duct towards the tail, do you see that it kind of disappears at some point? Yes, sir. Right there. And just pay attention to that. And you don't see that anymore, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So what does that indicate? Either it's a stricture or it's not connected to the distal duct, right? Yeah. Disconnected duct. And that's why she might have recurrence of the cyst. And mm. now take a look here. There's a fluid collection here, right? Mm. Th that's a, uh, a fluid collection here. And you see these, uh, uh, this uh, stent in there? Those are the cyst gastrostomy stents, which I put those in. So mm. if I keep going further from there, you see the stent right here? Yeah. And uh, if I go further from there, then uh, the duct starts appearing again right there. You see? Mm, yes. There is no duct in the middle yeah. uh, where the, uh, those stents are. So it's kind of a disconnected duct right there. So this is, you see a disconnected right there. This is a perfect example of that. The what duct, what duct could is, be the reason for it's this? It's a pancreatitis. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, so I see Saad Bhai. Saad Bhai? Yes, um, I am with you. Okay, so uh, what I'm showing here right now, you see a nice pancreas right there, right? Right. Okay, here, let me show you even a little bit better. You see the nice pancreas right there? Yes. Beautiful, duct right in the middle. Yeah. It's two and a half millimeter, I already measured that. Okay. I'm following that towards the distal body and tail. Do you see yeah. how that disappears? Yeah. No, here, here, and all of a sudden, it's a white spot here, no duct beyond that. Yeah. So either that indicates it's a tight stricture or it's a disconnected. So I'm going further towards the right, and then we start seeing that fluid, chronic fluid collection. You see that? With the Is there stent. a stent as well there? Yeah, there are stents. These are cyst gastrostomy stents. By the way, I took out the PD stent already. Okay. Okay. So these are cyst gastrostomy stent. You see that is just sitting right there. There's yep. a fluid collection. If I go a little bit further to the right uh, from there, and the duct appears again. You see yep. that? Yep. I so can see. So perfect example of disconnected duct. Okay. So what does that indicate? What do I need to do with cyst gastrostomy stents? Uh, uh, that's from the question for the audience. Sadhvai knows that. So, so what, what would you do now? Uh, she's got the cyst is basically gone almost and um, she's asymptomatic. She's fine. Mm, do we take these stents out or do we leave them is the question. No, that's not the question. The question is, should we take the stents out or should we leave? Your pseudocyst stents, cyst cystogastrostomy stents, should they be taken out or should they be left? Agar kya matlab? You have to give, an, uh, give a specific answer. This patient has already been told it's got disconnected. So most people think we should not take the stent out. Okay. Which is the right thing to do because there any... As soon as we take the stents out, this is going to reaccumulate, and uh, this all whole area is going to fill up, and there's going to be another cyst there. And uh, the proximal pancreas is draining very nicely. The duct is fine. It's a little bit prominent, but you see it's going into the ne neck area. I already looked at from the um, and D2 backwards after taking the stent out. Pancreas looks pretty healthy, no problems there. So I think my worry is, well, uh, and if I take these stents out, the problem is going to happen is uh, uh, these are uh, just going to reaccumulate. So if she doesn't want to want the stents, what's the other options you can provide? Any other treatment options? If we the suggestion about surgical treatment. 
Um, did, when you put the stent in, uh, you when you looked at the ERCP last time and you put the uh, pancreatic stuff, because I remember when I did the ERCP, there was there was complete pancreatic duct seam. So there was not complete disconnection when, uh, but but that was obviously prior to this uh, acute collection. When you did ERCP, did you see a? I think I did see it, but it was appeared like a. If I remember it, there was a really really tight stricture in that area. Okay. So yeah. so this but could be a stricture. Yeah, this could be a stricture itself too. Mm. That's what I was saying. Like when I took it off, like uh, when it disappears, either it indicates a stricture or just there is no connection with the distal. Okay. So I think my worry is it's going to reaccumulate. You agree? Yep. Okay. So I think we should leave it alone and uh, rest. And there is a healthy pancreas distally. You see that? Yep. Nice, very healthy. You see the left kidney here. You see a nice, beautiful duct right there. It's going down. All down. the way. And uh, do you guys see that? Uh, can you uh, lights are on, Karna? Uh, they uh, like when the scope is in the right position. I'm just standing really on one leg and uh, just relaxing. And my hand, this one is on uh, uh, really on that uh, keyboard, no problem. I can show you all that. The left kidney there, pancreas there. There's a spleen there. I'm rotating the scope. I get to that uh, uh, area where that uh, a fluid collection is, just move the scope in a little bit to get to the rest of the pancreas, get relaxing again in position, and uh, everything is in the right place, and you see the whole duct here going all the way to the neck of the pancreas. Okay, Khaled, so, quest question. G. Pancreatic stricture, G, G. do we know that after you've removed the stent? Or we follow it with maybe MRCP and see what's the situation like. The patient is asymptomatic, but then she already had a stent. Now that we have removed the stent, uh, we need to see if the patient develops pain again, then obviously um, one option would be to go back in and put a stent again. If she remains asymptomatic, do you follow this patient up with uh, with some kind of imaging to see what's happening with the pancreatic duct or do you leave it just uh, while the patient is asymptomatic you just leave everything as it is? I think I'll do a MRCP in six months just okay. to get an idea about the duct uh, yeah. status. That's if she's asymptomatic. Yes, that, that's if she's asymptomatic. Okay. But I still want to uh, get an idea about that where, what yeah. we're dealing with. I, I think that's fair okay. enough. That's okay, so that's where we are, right? That looks like fine. I'm gonna, I'll show you. Let me show you from the duodenal bulb a little bit. I already did the D2 saw by, so I, uh, I, I don't know if they saw that. I can show that again if needed, when they want to. So that's a air there in the bile duct. You see the nice bile duct right there? Yes. And uh, I'm gonna move the cursor right there. Bile duct right there, nice, beautiful. And uh, just rotating to the right, you see that there is a little bit air in the PD as well. Because I just took the stent out, so that's expected. Pancreatic duct right here, this is the duodenal fall right there, air in the bile duct as well as the pancreatic duct. And now I'm going to rotate the scope a little bit to the left to go towards the liver. I'm just gently pushing the scope in and also moving the big wheel away from me rotating rotating all the way slowly keep going keep going keep going until i get i'm keeping the duct, a duct right in the center of my transducer until i get to the liver hilum you see that how it's nicely going into the liver right there right there and uh, this is all the way to the liver hilum now i'm going to come back keep that duct there keep that duct there rotating 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 to the uh, la, uh, uh, right clockwise until I get again to uh, the ampulla. Now I will pay attention to the pancreatic duct only. If you pay attention to the pancreatic duct only right there, pancreatic duct going there, going there, it's nice looking at pancreatic duct in the neck, right here in the head area, a little bit smaller diameter but looking very normal. So from here, now I'm going to go to the D2. So 
So we took uh, the stent out already. Stent was intact. We looked at that uh, 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 after taking it out, make sure the stent is intact uh, and no uh, uh, any of the piece is left behind. So if you look here, I just went to the D2, shortened my scope, suctioned the air out, big wheel towards me, and I'm straight onto the aorta, okay? From yep. here, if I go a little bit to the right, uh, to the left, left torque, you, I don't know if you can see that. I yes, we that can see IBC. very nicely, that's the IVC. IBC. If I go further to the left, I we'll may see that the left or right, right kidney, kidney there. Okay, right kidney. Or sometimes instead of right kidney, you see the uh, uh, liver, right lobe of the liver, which is fine as well. So the, the uh, IVC is kind of uh, compressed right there. You see that? Yeah. Aorta is right there. Yep. When the aorta is in this position, I rotate the scope a little bit to the right to see if I can get any pancreas. I get the pancreas right there. Yep. I forget about the aorta. If I haven't gotten the pancreas, then I'll pull the scope back a little bit and then do go right and left. So here, you see a nice, beautiful looking pancreas right there. And I'm gonna pull the scope back a little bit to get, so I can find the ducts. That was an unsnake process right she there. To drink, so it's and here you see the PD, everybody sees that. Pic pic yes, we can see the PD. Yeah. Okay, and you see the bile duct right there? Yep. Aorta, first bile duct, and rotating a little bit clockwise, and then the PD. Again, aorta. So in D2, the uh, bile duct is next to or pro uh, closer to the aorta. Aorta as well as the as the as the transducer yeah, as the transducer and yeah. the pancreatic duct is a little away. So look at this nice image right here. You see the IVC yeah, right there. Yeah, you can see aorta, IVC, and both and the ducts. And the bile duct. Yeah, and literally the pancreatic duct, little bit of. And a little bit from there, yeah. I go a little bit to the right, and there. the PD comes yeah. up. Okay, so they all are pretty much like literally. I'm just rotating right and left. I'm not even pulling the scope anymore. Yep. They all are in the same plane, everything. Okay, mm -hmm. from here, pancreatic duct, bile duct, aorta, IVC, and if I go further to the left extreme, right kidney. Everything is in one plane, not yep. even touching the scope with the right hand. And mm -hmm. I'm just right there, I, IVC, aorta, bile duct, and pancreatic duct. Just gent uh, look at my hand movement, left hand scope hand movement. That's it. Excellent. Okay. So right here, you see the PD. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to uh, pull the scope back a little bit. You cannot follow the bile duct from D2. So the only thing which I'm going to follow is the pancreatic duct now. Okay. So right there, you see the pancreatic duct. I rotate right and left a little bit to get, take a look at the pancreatic print comma, make sure I'm not missing anything there. Keep, uh, keep pulling scope back. Scope big wheel wants to go a little bit away from me. I let it go you because see both it's the ducts going towards the ampulla very yeah. nicely. You see that those very nicely right here. Yeah. Yep. And this is a duodenal fall. You see the yep. duodenal wall. Yep. And bile duct is all the way to the duodenal wall to the yep. ampulla, and pancreatic duct all the way to the wa wall right there. That's black muscularis propria. Okay. So I'm gonna come back now, right here. Just gently coming back, gently coming back, trying to keep an eye on PD, trying to keep an eye on PD, which is right here, going this way, going this way, going this way, right there, right there, pulling the scope back, uh, pulling the scope back, duct is still there. I'm gonna let the wheel go a little bit because it wants to go away from me, which is fine. I, and uh, because it had to move back into the duodenal ball, and then into the uh, stomach. So you see that I did not let the duct go at any point, and I'm back into the stomach. I stopped there just to show you, and right there is that area of the fluid collection, right there, the stents are in there, and coming back, coming back, and the rest of the pancreas is right at the bottom. So just one movement from the ampulla all the way to the tail of the pancreas without losing the pancreatic duct. Excellent. And then uh, I, I already uh, showed you here, aorta is right here. You see the celiac. Celiac, there's a left gastric. Can you have appreciate that left gastric yes. coming up? And then you see that there's a one uh, uh, going uh, branch down. going down yep. and one going this way. The one going down is the uh, uh, common hepatic and 
this is splenic. So we are more interested in splenic. So I'm just going to follow the splenic. You see that? Following the splenic. How nicely you can see the, uh, even the portal confluence there when you follow the splenic, okay? Following that, that takes me straight to the pancreas. Didn't do anything, just gently moving that in, okay? So I think we are pretty much done with this part. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the scope back, uh, just in neutral position, just pulling the scope back, not doing anything really. Maybe a little bit big wheel towards me, and look at that, how nicely the left atrium comes, right there, pulmonary artery here, aorta here, you see nice valves there. You see the left ventricle, mitral valve, left atrial appendages right here. You see that, left atrial appendages. I'm gonna pull the scope back a little bit. And uh, you see uh, this is a subcrina. When I see the subcrina, scope is straight. The only thing I'm gonna do is let make the scope look, uh, uh, scope views look downwards. And I get to the aortic arch. When I get to the aortic arch, I'm going to pull the scope back until the aortic arch is underneath the transducer. Big wheel towards me. So I push the scope in maybe half a centimeter to one centimeter and just rotate a little bit. So the wheels are facing the patient and there's the AP window right there, okay? Now from there, I can come back further. If I'm more interested, I can take a look at the left carotid. Uh, there's going to be left uh, uh, subclavian here. I keep pulling that back a little bit further. And uh, as I mentioned before, that uh, you likely see the uh, thyroid gland uh, batter on the way in, but sometimes, oh, there is a nice, beautiful looking thyroid gland. You see that? Yes. Nice, beautiful looking thyroid gland. And there earlier I saw a uh, jugular as well. And uh, that's pretty much it. I think we are uh, done. Okay. Thank you, Khaled. Excellent. Okay. Questions? Any questions? Kiko. I can answer. Any other questions other than this topic on EUS because we're just going to be winding this up. Yeah, for example, if you find a cyst, what samples is specific? 